Discover Financial Stock, ticker symbol DFS. This stock is down 4% on the one year chart, massively underperforming the S&P 500. On the 17th of January, DFS presented quarterly earnings with a miss on EPS but a beat on revenue. For the upcoming earnings in April, almost all analysis expect another miss on earnings, potentially pushing this stock down even more. More on that later in this video. And people love DFS stock because of multiple reasons. One of the main thing being the dividend, and I understand why with dividend yield at 2.89% and a great dividend growth track record. And if we look at the past 5 years, we see that DFS underperforms the S&P 500 big time. And this is including dividends. So could this be the perfect time to buy DFS stock? Well, by the end of the video I will give you my 3 price targets, so make sure to stay tuned to see how I build up to these price targets. And more importantly, which price target is the most justified in my opinion. I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does DFS do? Discover Financial Services is a bank operating in two distinct segments, direct banking and payment services. The company issues credit and debit cards and provides other consumer banking products, including deposit accounts, student loans and other personal loans. The Discover Financial Network is the fourth largest payment network in the United States as ranked by overall purchase volume. And when we dive into fourth quarter results, we see that total loans was reported at 128 billion, up 15% year over year. Total revenue was reported at 4.19 billion, up 13% year over year, both looking really good to me. However, net income and EPS both decreased quite a lot with 59 and 62%. This worries me a bit to be honest especially since the full year of 2023 looks really good in terms of EPS and return on equity. In here we see that cards are up 13% year over year and this comforts me a lot of course. Organic students only 2%, but both personal and other are up a significant amount. In here we see that capital position is decreasing since 2021. To me this doesn't look that good. On the other hand, share repurchase and dividends are increasing quite nice. Another thing that worries me is the new card accounts. In 2022 we see a peak, which is 1.4 times above the 2019 levels. In 2023 we see a small decrease, which is not really a bad thing, since lockdown periods are gone. However, they expect this trend to continue in 2024. And the thing that worries me the most is the fact that they expect to sit lower than the 2019 levels. And now that we know a bit more about the company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue with diving into the fundamentals. Discover Financial Stock is a 24 billion market cap company. PE ratio is at 6.7, indicating that they are undervalued. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for DFS stock, so make sure to watch until the end. And in the meantime, please let me know your thoughts on the current valuation on Discover Financial Stock. And I'm also interested to hear your thoughts in general on this company. Revenue is at 15.4 billion and in this graph we see that revenue went up in the long run. However, during the lockdown period some interesting things happened and when things cooled down the revenue really skyrocketed again. Margins are going up and down in the past couple of years, but the fact that it is decreasing so heavily ever since 2022 concerns me a bit. EPS is going up in the long run. But again, ever since 2022 it is coming down big time, so that's definitely something to keep your eye on. Analysis expect that EPS is going to be flat in 2024 and 2025. They expect to see some decent growth numbers. However, in 2026 they expect them to decrease again, so it's not really consistent. 
For the revenue analysis expect in most years some growth, except in 2026. Overall this graph looks really interesting to me. Return on assets is sitting at 4.5% which is a low number. Return on equity is the most important number here and it is looking really good at 25%. Current ratio is at 1 which is a decent number for this type of company. The historical pattern also looks pretty decent to me. Right now DFS has 21 billion in debt and I prefer companies that can pay down at least a big chunk of their total debt with the total cash. DFS has roughly 25 billion in total cash so they can pay down a big chunk of their debt. To me this looks really impressive. But it is still very important that free cash flow is growing since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy big shares, pay dividends and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run at a pretty steady and consistent pace. Shares outstanding are decreasing in the long run, which is something that I really like. When shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 2.89% which is a great number. Animal payment is at $2.8 and payment ratio is at only 24%. I prefer 50% or lower, so right now they have 76% left in cash to buy big shares, pay down debt, do acquisitions and all other things. The 5 year growth rate is at 12.5% which is a great number. They have increased the dividends for 13 years in a row which is also really impressive. And if you take a look at these numbers, the dividends paid since 2012, you see that DFS did increase the dividends at a high pace. During the lockdown period, the pace was a little bit lower, which totally makes sense to me. Parent ratio is a very important metric with dividends. It tells you if the dividends are safe. And here we see that parent ratio is pretty steady around 20% if we ignore the lockdown periods, of course. In this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024, 2025 and 2026. Of course this is an estimation and can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It's expected to increase at the same rate as the past couple of years. And overall these dividends look really interesting to me, but how about the historical return? I decided to compare DFS stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added Sophie and Ally. On the 5 year chart we see that DFS was beaten by the S&P 500. In total DFS returned 65% including dividends, while the S&P 500 was sitting at almost 95% return. Both Sophie and Ally reported much lower returns. On the 1 year chart things look pretty interesting with both Sophie and Ally beaten the others in this list, and DFS is sitting at a negative 2%. On the 6 month chart it is Ally that is having the decent return and beating the others in this list. Both DFS and Sophie are seeing negative returns again. On the 1 month chart you guessed it, both DFS and Sophie are having a negative return, while both the S&P 500 and Ally are sitting at 1-2%. to Bottom line, DFS was beaten by the S&P 500 in the long run, and most recently it also doesn't look any good. So could this be the perfect time to buy DFS stock? Well, let's check the 3 price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the 3 price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 3, 4 and 5%, based on the historical performance, the Rhone outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin I'm putting in 18, 20 and 22. For free cash flow margin I'm putting in 38, 40 and 42%. For the PE ratio I'm putting in 6, 7 and 8. And for the price of free cash flow I'm putting in slightly lower numbers. My desired annual return is 15% since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Usually I put in 12.5% but I want to build in a higher margin of safety here. Right now DFS stock is sitting at $97. I hit analyze and we see a lot of green numbers. We have a low price target of 82 to 165 dollars. We have a mid price target of 101 to 193 dollars and we have a high price target of 123 to 225 dollars. And to be honest I did put in pretty low growth numbers in all cases, 
but it looks like the stock is undervalued even with this conservative approach. To me, the low to mid price target is the most justified here. However, I prefer to focus more on the multiple of earnings value, indicating they are in the middle of this range. So, what do you think is the most justified price target here? My final conclusion on DFS stock is that I think it is an interesting company and stock. Most fundamentals look pretty good, however, the decreasing margin is something that worries me a lot. On the other hand, the fact that they can pay down all their debt is something that comforts me a lot. From a dividend point of view, I get really excited about this company. Both the dividend yield and growth tracker look really good and the pair trade show is really low. I feel really confident about the future dividends. From a value point of view, I have a hard time to put a price target on them. That feels realistic enough. Right now I think they are around their fair valuation since the profit margin is really under pressure and the discounted cash flow might give you the wrong image here. For now I think I will wait a little bit longer with this company. I'm really excited to see the 2024 performance for them and keep analyzing them from time to time. And remember to always do your own research and never put a trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate the thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.